so let's let's get started man we got this blueprint segment uh how to how to win in warzone uh let, let why don't you kick a kick it off and uh and start this thing up no absolutely um try and keep it brief you know i'm not a guy that can go out and get 20 kills you know i think my personal no. record is 19 but that's in plunder uh, once in a while i might pop off a 10 or a 14 that's happened a time yep. but for me the best part about it is winning and so in talking yep, with same. some of the game's best players uh and having them r give us input feedback hear what they think their thought processes Steele and I came up with the blueprint for success and is basically geared towards winning so that we can all have fun doing it. Yeah. And it's, we've divided up in segments. And so for the next three, four weeks, we're going to break down all the segments step by step of what we think, how we feel and what works for us. The, yeah. we kind of covered the first step last week, which is have a game plan, have a game plan before you start your match. When you get into a game, make sure, number one, that everybody's on board with the same plan and their objective and their goal is the same. The first yeah, it needs step to in, be. Yeah, absolutely it does. Your first step, you know, get in there, get your contracts, get your intel, do your homework and get resources. Mm -hmm. Work together to get those. Get into circle by fourth or get into position by fourth circle. Right? Yeah, crucial. That's step one. We mm -hmm. kind of covered that last week. We're going to get into it a little bit more in the next episode, but that's yep. step one. Why don't you tell us about step two and what we're covering this week? Yeah, so uh, so that step one for sure. We we touched on it a little bit, and it'll be we'll con we'll constantly be talking about those points uh, as we're going through the show. But for today's episode, uh, we're going to start on step two, which is uh, firefighting tactics. Now. You can do all those things that uh, Gorilla just mentioned in step one, but it's kind of pointless if you don't know how to fight properly. So what we're going to do is break down how we feel, uh, how to engage enemies, how to maneuver in fights, you know, peeking, using cover, flanks, all that stuff. We're going to really dive into it. We're going to review some tape. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, examples of, uh, some pushes that were good. Uh, I think we've got some examples of, uh, not so good of, cause you got to, right? right? Like what's the point of showing good if you've got no context, but, uh, but yeah. And then we're going to roll on into, um, into the next segment. I believe you're going to cover this one for a Absolutely. Long. Absolutely. And the tactics just to cover that the tactics are important because what's they the are. point of getting resources if you can't keep them, you did all yep. that damn work for nothing. Um, yep. The next, but the next portion of it uh, for the following episode is going to be in-game game plan. So we have the mm -hmm. overall game plan of what you're trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. but as we all know, it doesn't Shit, always work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, and so you have to understand where where to move as you're trying to get to that fourth circle. Mm -hmm. One of the big elements, and when talking with Mike Golf, and we had a long conversation off camera about this. One of the big things is pushing a circle versus chasing a circle. Huge difference. Huge, huge, yeah, huge. Huge. Uh, because we've died many, many times chasing that damn circle. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we cover that. And then also, once you're in position, how to maintain position at all times. Yeah. Right? And then yeah, you're going to no, cover it's... that. Uh, what What is the final circle one? uh tactics yeah so so the next one is uh like you said final circle tactics um how to handle the battle so there's always these like weird kind of um fluid situations that go on in final circles where you know you may see people fighting or you may know where someone is but do you shoot do you not shoot do you move do you stay like so we're gonna get into like how how to properly assess those scenarios and try and make the best informed decision that you can with all the information provided. We're going to talk about pushing. So if you if if this is a fight that you need to take, we're going to talk about how to properly take on that fight. We're going to talk about uh, where you want to be maybe before you even engage that fight. So you know, plan your cover, uh, take the high ground if you can. And then finally executing, right? Let, let's yeah. get that win. Like when it's time, if you know, we got three teams left, uh, or maybe we're playing trios and there's, um, you know, uh, five or six people alive. Uh, it's time, right? Absolutely. Like, it, 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 let's go and get it. And, and so we'll break down how to properly do that. 
Awesome. Absolutely. And, and, and sorry, I've got to just tell people this. You guys got to, my wife switched the soap on me. My wife switches soap on me. This I am itching. My skin is on fire. You guys are seeing me constantly doing this and this and my skin. <laughs> why would she do that? For the love of God and all that is holy, why do you change the soap on me? Damn, Mercy. dude. Oh, I'm just, my skin is literally on fire. And I even talked to her before we came out here. And mm-hmm. I'm like, sweetie, did you switch yourself? She's like, oh, yeah, I wanted to try something different. No. <laughs> No, this is unnecessary. So if you see me constantly doing this and this and scratching, I apologize. Um, So let's get into the tactical side of uh, let's get to our segment. Um, Yeah, yeah. You know, do me a favor and and share your screen so I can watch in real time. I I can't share the screen. Oh, you can't. I cannot share the screen, but pull up. You can pull up your your uh, your whatchamacallit to pull us out. If I share the screen, it'll it'll mess up with the um, whatchamacallit. But we know what clips are there, and I'll tell you all about them. Okay. And so we're going to have Steel first off. Let me set this up. We are going to have Steel. Steel is standing on top of the bank here. This is, this is an example of a good push. In an understanding I'll let you guys area. watch it, maybe, and then I'll break it down because I obviously can't see it. And time. so I'm just going to set it up, let you know where we're at. Okay. And let's watch this up. Oh, man, Steel's just... You're throwing the grenades right now. The grenades are the changing. grenades are huge. If yeah, I didn't the have the grenades there, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And this is what I find interesting is right here. You know you're getting pushed. Yeah. Well, I so the, there's a little backstory to this. So I had been met, fighting these guys for probably like two minutes, and um, I had killed one of them earlier in the bank. And he was by himself and the other guys were back by the uh, apartments off of the restaurant. And um, I had killed one, thirsted him, and I heard him call me out. And then I immediately ran up the stairs to get on top of the bank. And why once I was you, up on the bank, why, did, oh, now, no, go. Now why would you jump on top? And, and, and this might be a little remedial for people, but I think sure. a lot of people don't see this. And, and, and some of the mm-hmm. people we play with don't understand Mm-hmm. why we do what we do uh you know there's a story mm-hmm. of the other day when we were playing and we're all three going and i'm just using it as, a, as an example we're yeah. all three moving to a spot you and i go into a building the other person yep. runs to the outside of the building and he didn't understand why we went in versus going to the outside because of our yeah set. So, so it's just the little things right like so he he i heard the death comms he called me out he said i was by myself because uh, you can also see the enemy's teammates, right? Everyone, if you've ever been killed and paid attention, you can see where the rest of the teammates of the guy that killed you are. So he said he's by himself in the bank. Like, get him, right? Yeah. So I heard that, and my immediate thought was, I need to get a vantage point so I can see these guys coming. And uh, so I booked it up the stairs, got on top of the bank, peeked the roof, and I saw the buyback flare first. Mm-hmm. There's a buy. The, the buy there is right behind um, uh, that little van i believe it is that yep. you can see in the clip so i saw the buyback flare and i was like all right well there's at least one there and then i um i saw him and shot him i i think i might have take took half a plate or something i didn't hit many shots on the original yep. uh engagement there and then i followed that up with the grenades i got an armor broken and then i downed one i was like well i just downed one i saw one yep. at most there's only one we're playing trios so at most there's only one more there because the other guy's in the air yeah so I jumped off with my parachute. I got my LC10. Um, I absolutely work, buddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you I, did. yeah, yeah, you did. yeah, absolutely work, buddy. And then um, I start to try and juice the one on the right. Uh, he's maybe like one health from being uh, full killed. I go bash the other guy in, and then I can hear the parachute of um, the gulag are coming in. Okay. Uh, but I know, and then like normally, if I had some more ammo in my gun, I would have turned around and just killed him. But I knew that I it, it, I would have to hit every single shot that I had. I think I got like eight bullets. In my six. Clip. You only have six. Six. Yeah. So that's pretty, even with two plates, that's going to be tough. So what I do is I get around on the other side of the van, uh, reload my, change my mag out. And now I feel pretty good about uh, jumping around and getting them. And in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, maybe he picked up a couple guns, but they probably have little to no ammo in them. He's also has two plates. Uh, I should be reasonably able to challenge him uh, and, and kill him. So I Absolutely. bunny hop, come around, and just obliterate him. So why, 
why did you not re take the time to replay it right there? You're behind because I didn't want to give him ch a time to to reload the guns that I figured were probably low. Because if he reloads the guns and e maybe even he pops a plate in, then it kind of evens the playing field out, right? Um, at this point, he's it's kind of a chaotic situation for him. He just had both of his teammates die. He's coming back from being bought back. He's got to land, pick guns up, figure out what the hell's going on. Um, so I need I wanted to take advantage of that chaos, and you know I I'm absolutely kind of gambling on myself at that point too, right? I'm saying that you know I'm more prepared for this fight. I've already got my SMG out. I know exactly where you are. Uh, I pre-fired him because I knew that's I could hear him, right? Absolutely. And, and there comes a point, and, and this is for anybody who's watching, where you have mm -hmm. to determine my bet is better than your better, right? Yep. You just have yep. to rely on yourself. You don't mm -hmm. have time to play. If you take time to play, he has time to reorient himself. So, Because mm -hmm. I am a big proponent of replating as much as possible. Oh, for sure. But at this point, there are times, and this is one of the critical things that I feel with this, and I think you did a fantastic job, is recognizing situation and taking advantage of the element of surprise. I do have the clip mm -hmm. stopped right where you're coming around the corner. He doesn't even understand what's going on yet. And no. you've already got your gun, your mm -hmm. head high on him, and you're mm -hmm. ready to go. And a great, yeah. great job. And I'm going to let this finish out. And then let's, yeah, uh, let's jump to your, your next one right after this. And your next yeah. one was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Let me know when the people sits him down. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> just sits him down. Okay, so now, now we're in the, the fire station. And mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, anybody who's watching still clutches the shit right out of this. I'm out of <laughs> ammo. I'm getting down twice. I've broke three guys. Yeah. We have two teams on us. He's got seven kills already. Still's already got seven. He's already clutched it. Let's take a peek at this, and then we'll rewind it. Sounds good. So he's busting him up. I'm screaming, I'm out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. I'm down. <laughs> the guy's coming up, and he lasers him. Drop shots for the dub. Boom. Done. Yeah. Over, Johnny. It's over. over, Johnny. It's over, Johnny. So I'll set the scene a little bit. Uh, we'll even go back a little Absolutely. further. So that was on Monday's stream, uh, the day after our first episode, uh, with, when we had our, our pal Mike Golf on. And uh, that was, I think, one of the first couple of games where we were like, all right, let's try and implement this blueprint for success by doing our homework, yes. getting our resources, getting in position by fourth circle. And we actually did all of that with, uh, I think we might have had minimal casualties. We might have had one or two deaths up I think until we only had one. that point. I think at Maybe that point, one. We only had okay. One. We had Maddie, Maddie mm -hmm. and we had to get him back at the gulag. We just bought him back. Yeah. There were there was a we, our, our our ghost loadout was a was a real challenge. We worked as a team to get it. Uh, we bounced out of there because it was just absolute chaos. I think we picked it up at Storage Town, mm -hmm. just off of Storage Town, and um, we had we had our fourth circle intel. At all I'm pretty sure if it wasn't before ghost loadout, it was shortly after. We knew where we needed to be. Uh, we got on our horse and got there. Uh, we were in the fire station just off of the hangars by um, the tarmac there. Uh, we were set up. We uh, we fended off a couple squads that tried to breach us. We had proxies, plate boxes, ammo boxes, stealths, kill streaks. Yeah. Excuse me. You name it, we had it. And then Circle kind of broke a little bit to our left to one of those like warehouse, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, buildings there. Yep. Anyway, and we had to go reposition there. We still had the power position for Endgame. Uh, but then gas pushed us out and we had to get out. So yeah. I jumped out and that little shipping container that you see me with the LC-10, I was kind of there for the majority of uh, majority of that circle. And you guys were a little bit off to the right, which was actually probably way smarter than what I was doing <laughs> well, because it... circle pushed back into the fire station. So you guys were able to go inside. You had cover. And the guys that we were fighting from prior were coming from uh, – the, the titties, the water canisters coming in towards the fire station. Yeah, but then and this is the last. And here's a scenario: uh, mm -hmm. the last group. Uh, by the way, double cross. Thank you very much. Um, but it it worked out. We may have had the better position, but we mm -hmm. formed multiple angles of attack. Yeah. on these people. They literally Let's... are focused on us. 
What's great about this video, and I didn't notice it until I watched it probably like 60 times, you can see Matt's character. He pops out right behind the last kill that I get. Like, literally, it's almost simultaneously. Like, I get the winning kill, and the match just boom. So, like, even if I I lose that chow and I go down, yeah. Matt, and I, I think John was right behind him, too. You guys are there, and you're going to clean it up. Like, I, I would bet the house on it. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm just mm. to your right at this point. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I, I got picked up a little bit of ammo and, mm -hmm. uh, I'm right there. So yeah. what is your thought process? Okay. So we got your first one mm -hmm. and you see him coming across. You got yourself great position. You're relying on your better, right? At this point. Yeah. So, so the actual gunfight itself, I knew that guy was behind us the whole time. I think, and I cut it out of the video, but I'm like, boys, look at your mini map. Look yep. at your mini map. There's someone to our left. And, um, and I knew it was one because, um, I don't know, I, th these headsets, these Steel Series headsets, man, are beautiful. Nice. You can hear everything. And, uh, yeah, so I could hear him, like, shuffling around. He was trying to be quiet, but I knew he was there. And I also knew that we had the team that we were dealing with the whole time in front of us. Absolutely. Uh, I knew they were pretty banged up because we had just been obliterating them mm -hmm. earlier. But, you know... Uh, still a threat for sure, yep. but uh, I knew I had to take care of that guy behind me because if I didn't, he was going to shoot me in the back while I was dealing with the guys coming towards the fire station. Absolutely. So I just went in with my gas mask, got behind him, you know, ended him, and Where then my go? main my main focus was to get as quick as I could towards the fire station to meet those guys in the hole there and up and just smash them. And the first guy, I got lucky. I mean, the LC-10, they call it a long-range machine gun. It is, man. Like, I wasted that guy. I don't know how far that is, 20, uh, 30 meters. 30 meters. Yeah, just, just, and I just, just wasted him. He didn't wasn't full plates or anything, yeah. but still, he wasn't going to survive regardless. And then the dude that tried to snipe me, not sure what his deal was. If he had an AR, it's a lot closer of a fight. And like, But like I said, Maddie's there on for cleanup anyway, so we'd yep. still win. But yeah, just Absolutely. quick six, baby. No, yeah. and the great thing about it is, is we, and I think this is what we want to bring to everybody, is mm -hmm. multiple angles of attack. Number one, yeah. Uh, number two, there is that point we just talked about it that my better is better than your better. Number mm -hmm. three, drop shot. You are a drop shot king. Yeah, like I said, if you don't have, if you play on controller and you don't have paddles, I'm not sure what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's difficult. And then mm -hmm. the final aspect of it is as a team work together because we have them literally covered from three different angles right now. Yeah. They were, there was no chance that those guys we're, were going to win that game. We're not Even if I get killed by the guy who I child behind me in the gas, mm -hmm. you guys still have the fire station. You've got the garage um, taken care of. Like you're probably still going to smoke those guys regardless. Absolutely. No, Cause 100%. you got in position. No. Yeah. I, it, 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 and, and when, what we're trying to do here is just give you the thought process of this is what you're doing. Relying on yep. your teammates. Everybody works together. Um, yep. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I guess we'll get to maybe my little little smippy I got here. Uh, yeah, let's do it, man. And I'll try and uh, you you know which ones we got in there um, for me. Uh, I, I, a little, I always get a little nervous about talking about myself. But I am going to cover this just a touch here, guys. Um, so this one here with uh, uh, Steel and I are playing duos and he gets he gets downed and there is a couple elements about this that I, I really want to talk about before we get into it. So so he's down. We're duo. We just we kind of took out uh, still took out. I believe you took out a team there. We I broke one. You downed him. And now we're getting pushed by a second team. Yeah, we're and, getting third party. And yep. so Steel takes the guy on we're trying to get to that building in front of you on the screen on the right hand side he goes down there is a sniper in the building to our left i realize that i need to get to steel now normally i sm throw the smoke right in front of me so i can get to a point i'm not worried about the sniper because he already missed me a couple times i didn't think he was that good so yeah. i throw the smoke beyond where i normally would i throw it to where i'm going because the guy that down still is right in front of him or close to him, yep. I'm assuming. Yep. I need cover from him. I'm gonna I know I'm gonna take a few shots as I'm getting there, but I think I can slide cancel, jump, you know, the regular. Yep. And get to my point, which I do. Yep. And from that point, I'm I'm assuming 
I, I'm assuming the guy's either right there, but he doesn't know I'm there yet, or he's a little bit off, and I have a little time to play. And so mm -hmm. I jump in. You see me jump through the, the smoke here, and I play it out. Steel at yep. this time is calling him out how far he is. So now I have 100. You don't have the audio, but I have 100% certainty I can play it up right here. This is the mm -hmm. effectiveness of good communication. Because yeah. if he doesn't, I don't take the time to plate because I see the smoke's dissipating. I know I'm yeah. going to get in battle, but he's he still is literally calling 30 meters, 30 meters in front. He's not here yet. He's literally making these call outs to me. It enables mm -hmm. me to plate. So I have a few moments to play. And you see it. Bam. He's pushing. He's getting lasered. Uh, one of the few times I actually laser somebody. <laughs> uh, Dude, I really love this clip from you. This is one of my favorite clips because it illustrates the whole thought process on how to handle, you know, a stressful situation when you've got multiple guys trying to get to you. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I did well. I did well. I mean, it, yeah. it, I got to give myself a little credit. I'm not a bad gamer. Yeah. Uh, I think I like I uh, the self-deprecation a little bit better. Um, but mm -hmm. I know I can handle my own for certain. So, so this next step here is I'm in a firefight, and as I'm fighting this guy, obviously I'm focused on killing him. But I'm also thinking I've got a sniper that's going to mm -hmm. push me right yeah, now. Yeah, you got someone over here. A hundred percent. He's he a hundred percent, and it's situational awareness and anticipating what's going to happen. I can't yeah. hear him because I've got so much firefights going on. We got the smoke going. The audio is not there for me to hear this guy. So I take a moment. All of a sudden, I know he's here. Switch my guns and sit down. He's gonna mm -hmm. get. He's done. He's done. The best part of that, in my opinion, is your ability to anticipate the push because you just finished shooting the shit out of that guy, right? So that guy who's pushing is gonna, in his head, is gonna be like, okay. Uh, my enemy is reloading probably. And if I push now, I might be able to catch mm -hmm. him in a reload. But what he didn't factor in was the animation of hopping over the fence. And you were able to capitalize on that instantly. Absolutely. And and because you know his friend or his buddy's calling him out. He's broken. He's broken. He's broken. Yep. We Yo, all... he's one shot. I do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's one, he's shot. one shot. Get him. Absolutely. So <laughs> with that being said, um, I, I was able to anticipate that. I did anticipate yeah. it. Didn't bother reloading. I knew I had the, the, the green yep, FFAR uh, and mm -hmm. just ready to get on. So that was great. We ended up coming out of that battle. And actually, after that battle, we downed another full squad. And I mm -hmm. think you – did we win? No, we didn't. We finished third on that one, I believe. But pretty damn Yeah, close. my memory's fuzzy on that. But that, that was an afternoon where we were just working together. Like, I mean, we – do but that afternoon in particular stood out for me yeah for sure and the next mm -hmm. one we're gonna i'm gonna br um, briefly go over these ones i'm just gonna cover these real quick we're gonna got not get too in depth on these um this okay. one here is uh how to cover somebody that's been down and anticipate where they are and we are we're playing with chris here um this is actually friday night yeah shout out chris we're, thanks for the comment buddy uh, absolutely and we were uh, we were a little inebriated here i was I was already in Oh, this it. is from Friday Night's yeah. Train? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was, Friday night. I was feeling good, too. And so you, on this one here, uh, let me get back to it so that we can set it up. On this one here, still actually had downed somebody. We have a, we just landed. Steel jumps in. We have a group on us. Still down somebody in Thurston. I had already called him out. He's going left. Steel jumps left. Takes care of business. He knew he was there. As he, and then as still is thirsting him, still gets downed. One of the great things is, and this is where Chris is, Chris is on the right side, and he's already downed another one. So we only have one guy left. Yep. Still calls oh, I remember out, this. Yep. Or Chris calls it out. Down, down, mm -hmm. down. I know that there's somebody else here. I saw him shoot it. Also, still's giving me great comms. Comms are just paramount in, in accomplishing this. Yeah. And so he calls him out. I'm yelling, get behind me left, get behind me. Chris rotates, and I laser the guy. I anticipate the guy coming around the the the, the uh, wall here in front of us. Because I saw him leave. Chris also yells, left, left, left. So I know right where he's at. Still rotates back behind. Chris is able to revive him while I'm covering him. 
So that, that right there is one of the elements that you need, I think we all need to take into consideration, is when mm -hmm. we're getting into a battle, somebody goes down, use an element of cover to cover them, they crawl back and comms all the way across. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we wanted to focus in on the comms. Do you remember the comms Even, on this one still? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's one thing I try and always make sure I'm doing a good job at is effective and and concise communications because comms can get you killed and comms can save your life. If you have bad comms and you're in the middle of a gunfight, um, you're, it, it, it just it leads to disastrous outcomes all the time, right? If you're just yelling and screaming about somebody juicing you or like whatever instead of like making a call out like it all it does is is hinder your teammates who are still alive their hinders their ability to win right? no absolutely and then the final one that we got uh, the final one that we're gonna have um i'm just finishing this uh, i'll finish this up as we're looking um mm -hmm. but the final one that we want to talk about is rotation and again communication um, mm -hmm. I'm going to set this up. It's exact same game, exact same scenario. Now we're getting pushed by a third squad uh, on our on our um, Friday night game. Steel and Chris are up top. There, I had gotten busted up, as you can tell. I call them out. They push towards it, and I'm going to rotate left. I needed time to play it up, and I trust in these two guys. Uh, Chris is. The first time I ever played with Chris, pretty damn good player, and I played with you enough to know you're going to handle your own. I'll take both you two on a three against two anytime. Yep. So I'm Hell trusting yeah. in them. I'm calling out the whole time. I'm rotating left, flanking left. Steel's yelling, great comms. I, or he said, uh, good comms, uh, copy left. So I rotate left, and that's imperative. If you're going to make a, a rotation to the left or you're going to flank somebody, let your teammates know. Would you agree with that still? Yeah, no, for sure. As you like as much relevant information that you can get out when you're in a firefight, the better, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need the 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 BS like like nonsensical stuff like oh uh, he's not like well i mean maybe maybe if he's not good that is something you say but you guys know right <laughs> you've all been in a squad where people are like carrying on and saying stuff that really isn't relevant to whatever's going on and it's just taking up the the mic absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so i'm calling it i'm calling it for steel rotate or flanking left flanking left flanking left they down two guys and bust them up uh and bust up the third and so as we're going through this, I jump over the wall, and as I'm turning, he's yelling, or they're not yelling, but he's telling me everything that just happened. He down, They down both of us. One guy flanked them. He's jumping out the window. He literally said he's jumping out the window in three and probably two seconds. I don't even have to look. I already know. Out the window, here he comes. Boom. Thirst. Yep. Squad wipe. Done. Revolver revive our boys and we're ready to go so if you're going to make a flank flanking is imperative i think in all of it oh huge. and then rotating Jeez, around beautiful uh yeah. but the comps so i think we've covered that enough <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. i mean we could you know us we could talk about this for five hours but for the sake of uh moving on <laughs> absolutely that was long yeah. that was long but i think it's uh you know it's important it, it is important and you and i can get a little long-winded on that for sure we can talk yeah. about it all day because uh, it helps yeah. us better. One oh, thing I do yeah. want to mention before we move on, uh, and I think this is important for anybody who watches this, anybody who's doing it, and it's interesting because I don't know why I didn't do this. When I played football, we would watch game film, and we would watch it of ourselves nonstop, after mm -hmm. time, after time. I'm just sitting there clicking, just clicking. Yep. I made a wrong step. I did it here. Since we started this show, I've watched – hours of film on me yep, and same. i've learned so much i'm like holy shit you're done and you're 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 dumb um and uh i would recommend i would recommend that um and real quickly it's the first step of getting better for sure it's just watching what you do because you'll be you'll be amazed at some of the things that you'll do and say and it'll be cringe worthy for sure but you know take it with a grain of salt right like absolutely it's, it's, actually want to get better at it that's that's the way to do it to start anyway mm -hmm. 